Welcome, Demi. Uh, I'm just going to give you a bio and then we'll begin with the Q&A. So Demi Terreras is the Features Editor at King Features. She's a creative writer and editor with several years of publication experience who is strongly skilled in copy editing, proofreading and fact checking. She attained her BA in English creative writing track with a minor in mass communication and a certificate in editing and publishing from the University of Central Florida. Welcome, Demi. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So the first question on my list is quite a generic one, which I'm sure you get asked a lot. It's how did you get your first job in editing? Well, I got my first job in editing after um, having completed a few internships at UCF. I started looking for part-time jobs in uh, the area and I heard back um, from this local newspaper called uh, Nona Hood News, hyper local to uh, the Lake Nona area in Orlando. And they, um, I originally asked if they needed me in a writing capacity. And um, I also advertised the, the um, that I wanted to work for them in an edit, editing capacity if they had any open posts in their team. And so uh, when I sat for the interview, I expressed my desire again for editing. And um, they did say that they had a space for a copy editor, but that I also had to take on a few articles on the side as a staff writer for their team as well. So um, after a few trial weeks of both editing and writing articles, I was officially on the team, was very overjoyed to have landed my first job in editing. And so from there, I eventually became the editor-in-chief of Nona Hood News for about two and a half years. That's incredible. I mean, what a, what a journey. When you did the interview, your experience with the internships at UCF, that was what they used as your experience. You know, the bit in the advert where it says, like, must have six months minimum copy editing experience they they took that as your experience right right exactly so I yeah I definitely um explained and described more of the experiences that I had uh within the Florida Review and Cypress Dome and they definitely took that as real world experience that's amazing and then you mentioned that you really quickly progressed into you know a really kind of high level position how did you if you know I think that's kind of what students dream of what tips have you got for somebody if they happen to get an entry-level role like yours to really make the most of it and do what you did well I absorbed as much knowledge as I um there in chief before I ended up you know taking I, I I definitely you know asked her worked alongside her in the proofreader for any um basically any um sorry my computer went totally black it's <laughs> okay, don't oh, worry. Yeah, you're I know. Fine. Sorry. Please don't worry. It's, it's no problem at all. This is the thing. Um, you're, you're good, honestly. Nothing went wrong. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, working alongside her and the proofreader, like that was also the time I, I absorbed the style book, which is AP style that basically everybody asks for um, applying for newspaper jobs, especially in magazine jobs. So, um, that's those just, you know just learning as much as I could in that experience. Cause it's really like an entry level, like you really need to, I guess, find out who you are as an editor in those times. Um, if you hadn't have done your internships with UCF, you know, the Florida Review, the Cypress Dome, um, I mean, what other ways are there for students to get this experience, especially of things like AP style? We've been doing this a bit on the course, but you know, again, this might be something that you picked up on your way. Are there any kind of other things that you might have done if you didn't have those internships? I would often um, just, this is like more obviously kind of in that interning volunteer kind of level, but basically like just helping others out with their writing, helping them form their writing the way it needs to be. A lot of, a lot of my time at UCF, they would be like, uh, the, professor, the professors would say, oh, you know, like help each other out, form a writing community and work with each other to strengthen both your writing and your editing styles. So I would say that if, if interning um, experiences aren't available, that would also be a great way to learn and pick up some editing, I guess, tips. Do you think that employers would take that sort of thing seriously though? Or do you think that they'd prefer something a bit more structured? I do. And that's why I really do suggest the internships and just any experience that you can get, whether it, maybe it's like a remote internship, because 
those are very much offered now. Um, and anything that you can just like, maybe even promote like a blog or creating a blog and working on that, that is also more of a, like a portfolio you can build for yourself. That's great, thank you. That's really encouraging. Um, I think we've kind of covered this, but I'm gonna just ask you again, just if there's anything that we might not have touched on with it. And it's what sort of experience would you recommend that students at UCF take? Um, um, sorry. <laughs> quite a big one there, sorry. <laughs> um, well, the Florida Review and Cypress internships, um, I do think the editing for creative writers class is extremely helpful if you are a writer and or editor, which I think, you know, most editors are writers. Um, you do have in a certain capacity within your your job so um this class and the professor for this class um taught me and gave us all a blueprint on how to a apply for jobs and then also how to find them um a lot of students don't really know where to start so um having that blueprint of of like oh, okay I, I can check these websites these resources um I can keep up with these companies and just check if they have any job listings. Um, and that also, that class as well also ta taught me how to um, write an effective cover letter and have a really strong resume because as an editor, um, you don't wanna have uh, any kind of grammar, like mistakes or errors on your resume or in your cover letter because that is a dead giveaway you're not as meticulous as you should be great okay that's really useful thank you yeah. we've done a kind of job pump week and we did cover letters and cvs but it's always good to just hear the importance of that reiterated right and i think a lot of students they see that and they they they're listening and they're taking the advice but they don't really realize how monumental it is because i i in my experience i was like okay well this is how you do it and I guess, you know, um, this is my resume, but it's like, if you really put in that work to make sure it looks good and cover letter as well, it could really be the defining factor in whether, in whether an, an employer like picks you or not. Um, you were on the EMP certificate, obviously you've mentioned that. How useful has it been? I mean, you know, what, obviously it sounds like it's been very useful for you, Demi. Yes, very, very useful. Um, I have found it incredibly useful just because I think it provides me with an edge. Um, you're in the certificate, you learn a lot about uh, the different aspects of the industry. And um, it doesn't really matter like whether you're going in, if, whether you want to go into newspaper editing or um, magazines, book publishing, social media even. Um, I think knowing the different aspects of the industry is really, important. For example, um, as an editor, I'm not involved really um, in the sales or business aspect of the publisher, but um, because I took a class that, that was offered in their certificate and showed me or did a unit on this is how, um, you know, publishers break down what they can afford to, you know, create the content they can afford to create. That gives you an edge because you understand as an employee, the how behind putting out content and that in the end, content must be desirable, content must be marketable. So I think just, an just as an example, that is really, really important to, to know. Um, what, what class was that that you just referenced? That sounds really interesting. Um, editing for Creative Writers, again, that class, um, there was um, a section on uh, publishing trends and just the, the, again, like the behind the scenes of like, I think they're called f &P sheets in book publishing um, and just the price breakdowns and, um, you know, also just, um, it was just like industry trends and like what's really, really, um, I guess picking up nowadays because publishing has definitely changed um, as time has gone on, and especially in the past 20 years, a lot of people, uh, a lot of publishers are digital. So it's just, I think it's really important to know. 
That's great. Thank you. I'm literally making notes to contact Professor Kalea right now and get this so I can upload <laughs> the content because she's actually one of the professors who's going to be teaching this Introduction to Editorial Professions course. So I'm thinking we might as well merge our materials right now. That's Thank you so much for that insight, Demi. Um, Demi, how did you get writing samples? That's something that's coming up a lot with students. Like, how do you get your first one? How do you convince somebody to take you on and let you write? Right. It's not easy. That is for sure. But um, I guess after I would, I, my first job in editing or before my first job in editing, I only had a few writing samples. Um, like, and I guess you wouldn't even consider them writing samples. They were like social media captions that I've written or, you know, one press release I think I wrote. And um, what really propelled me to have more of an archive of content written by me was that first job I received in Notative News. I was adamant, um, excuse me, I was adamant about, um, I will take on any article, any topic that you'd like me to, whatever they needed assistance with, I wanted to be of help. Um, and then within the same token, they saw that within me and they allowed me to pitch articles to them. And so I pitched um, a movie, a TV show and a music review because I love entertainment. I love pop culture, um, probably my favorite topics to write about. So um, when I did that and I, I was cranking out, you know, those three articles monthly and they were all for it because they definitely needed the content. So um, that's, you know, through your job, you that's like one of the easiest way to obtain examples. Outside of, you know, your job, I would say working for Nona Hood News on, on through the company, I realized a lot of people would pitch us guest content. And so that is another way for like, as if, as a freelancer, um, kind of, you know, you're advertising um, content. Oh, this, I think this would be a great fit for your blog. I think this would be a great fit for your website. Um, could I write a, an article about this bi-monthly, semi-annually? Semi could I, every quarterly even, just, okay. that's great. That's a great way to get your name out there. And then, especially if they have the a kind of social media team that like posts these articles, that definitely increases your reach and you can share it yourself. And that's another way for sure. Um, students on this course have been learning a little bit about how to pitch. Do you have any kind of top tips? I imagine, I mean, did you consider yourself like really well-versed in pitching when you started your job or were you like, what am I doing here? I was more of the latter, definitely like, what am I doing here? I'm definitely not the the sales type of, uh, you know, really good pitch like that. But um, I guess what really helped me was just, actually, this was another class taken at UCF. It was an advanced script writing class and the professor was really adamant as a script writer, you need to learn how to pitch your work because you're not going to get more than a second in with directors and you have to make sure you you, you know, put yourself out there. So I would say, keep it simple. Keep it very simple. If you're pitching something that, um, that, you know, you're not really sure if it will bite or not, I would stick with something that you're more accustomed to writing, a style you're more accustomed to writing. And um, just be open for rejection, always. <laughs> I think that's really good advice for, for life to be honest that's that's it really is nice to hear somebody who's actually done this come from UCF you know walked the walk and, and said yeah it's possible um a final question to you and it's again quite a broad one so I apologize but it's really just is there anything else that we've missed like is there anything else that you'd like to reiterate to students who were once like you you know who are sitting on the EMP course maybe they're confused maybe they're coming to the end of the semester, they're putting together their cover letters, their CVs, their editing portfolios, they're trying to get writing samples, you know, they're trying to juggle everything, they're a little bit maybe disheartened with it all. Um, is there anything perhaps that I haven't covered or just that you'd like to kind of stress for them? Um, <clears throat> stay as optimistic as you can, just overall general advice. I know it's easy to get disheartened and see those rejections start coming in and or not hearing back from anything, but I will always take rejection as good news to me. I'm like, okay, you know, one step closer. Um, do not get disheartened because that's the quickest way to burn out. Um, and then I think what's really important nowadays, especially that I don't think many professors or employers speak about is that 
employers really want to see a genuine interest in their company and the content that is being provided. So for example, um, the company I currently work for, King Features, we have a comic side and a majority of the people that work in the comics department love comics and we produce comics like Popeye and Macanudo. So they're old school comics and they just, you can tell that team has such a great desire and love for comics and an interest in, in it that gets them through the door. And so, um, for example, also in the puzzles department at, at our same company, they're, they're puzzle nerds, they love it. They love doing puzzles in their free time. They keep up with current puzzles like Wordle, try to create puzzles, you know? So just being genuinely interested in the content. And then as well, if you, I know it's hard to find companies that you like, oh, I love this company, but like that also, are you working, you trying to aim and work for your dream company or at least someone in the business that you really respect will get you really far. It'll make a difference in your application process and your in, in your interview process as well. Thank you. It kind of relates to something we talked briefly about via email. Um, I remember you mentioned that actually employers can be a bit more flexible than you might think with experience. Could you yeah. just expand on that? Because I found that really surprising and kind of encouraging too. Yes, that is also a another very important thing to keep in mind. Um, and this is something I actually learned from uh, a few of my friends who are in content creation in the social media marketing side of things. Um, because I, I would see job applicate, job positions being posted on LinkedIn um, or another website. And I would see that, oh, you need three years or you need five years or you need all this editing experience that it's simply impossible to kind of obtain before, uh, before you graduate. So um, if you're really to looking, looking to find a job within, you know, once you graduate, um, I would just say, take those more as guidelines. So for example, I, um, earlier this year, I had applied for a job at Disney Publishing and it was um, in the children's book publishing um, aspect of that company. And I, as a newspaper journal, like magazines, I, I have no experience in book publishing as of yet. Um, and, so I saw that two to three years of children's book publishing uh, this, uh, requirement qualification and I still applied. And I, while I didn't end up uh, getting the position, I sat through three rounds of, ed of interviews. So got me through the door and just that desire of, oh, I love book publishing. I've been wanting to get into book publishing. And at the same time, I love Disney. I love the theme parks. I love uh, the movies. I love, like I said, entertainment movies, love it. So um, it was a company I was genuinely interested in. I think that at least, you know, got me through the door. How did you show that interest? I presume it was in your cover letter. Yes, I highlighted it in my cover letter and then, um, you know, breaking the ice with interviewers or uh, breaking the ice with the um, potential employers. I'll just, they will also, especially Disney will always ask you, so what, why Disney? Why, why does, why, why do we appeal to units? Like, cause you're Disney, man. Like <laughs> you're amazing. Like you guys have such a hold all over, you know, uh, not just the Orlando area, but American culture and play, they play such a formative role, especially with children. They are, they are a powerhouse. So um, I kind of deviated from the question a little bit. Did I? No, it's great. Yeah, no, yeah. it's really interesting. It's, it's good to see someone have that passion because I think, again, something that, some of our students feel sometimes it's like what's the point why should I even apply like I'm not going to be the one that gets this but it just shows actually if you do have that um that excitement in your interview you know that it might just count maybe sometimes for a little bit more than just someone who can knock off all the things they've edited and blah, 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 blah. Exactly. I think that's great yes exactly so yeah the, definitely that enthusiasm can go a long way that's great, Demi. Thank you so much. I, I just want to thank you personally, because this has been so uplifting. I think to see somebody who, as I said, has actually been on the EMP, done this, you know, gone out there and thought, well, how can I do this from, from kind of right where you mentioned that you weren't sure where to look for jobs, and then you found something, and then you kind of nudged your way in. It's right. really wonderful. So thank you so much for helping out. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. This no, honestly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>